Guys, we're back in Needham today. Big week ahead of us here. Uh, concrete guys are on site placing all of our phase one footings. Uh, we're gonna get down in the hall and talk to Mike, but real quickly, when I say phase one, this is the main part of the house. Uh, and what's gonna happen is we are gonna get these footings placed. You can see all the vertical rebar is set ready for our walls. We're gonna then prep basically for slab while we're setting forms for our walls, we're gonna do our walls, and then in phase two is when we actually form the two garage bays. So for us, we have three concrete trucks today. We have a pump on site. The guys are down there placing the concrete. I say place, some guys say pour. I don't think concrete, while it's in a liquid form now, is really a liquid. You guys can argue about that in the comments. We can figure it out from there. Mike has been working with all the guys on site. Uh, Mike, this is exciting, yeah. man. So I know. For everyone that's Very watching, exciting. you know that once we go vertical, you get your, your office. My home away from home. Your yeah. home away from home. Yeah. Uh, but talk to us about you know, the week, the week leading up to this, what we're doing, why we're doing it, what's going on. Yeah, so we had a quick little reset. We had to um, line up a different concrete contractor, you know, just the schedules didn't align. So we just move on, we get a new guy. And luckily, Mike was able to pull through and work, work out on this one. Started forming up all the footings at the end of last week. Yeah. They did all the fabrication and rebar in the shop. So when they pulled up the site, everything came in on a trailer. They dropped it and they were straight to business. Okay. No, no yeah. lost time. Um, and then they came in yesterday. They finished up forming up, getting the rebar in there, tying everything up. We got all the structural stuff dialed in first thing this morning. And now at noon, our first the pump showed up a little bit before that, and then now we got concrete so, flying in. So just for reference, Mike says they were in the shop Thursday, been in rebar Friday on site. Yep. T today's Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. So they were on site two days getting the footings placed, yep. all the rebar in. So yeah. a ton of rebar actually over here, you can see a ton of rebar in the footing itself. And yep. then we have our Free vertical. Rerun in the length. And then we also have, that's every 12 on center the short way. Mm -hmm. And then that ties into our vertical reinforcement coming up now. So what are the what's the spacing on these? That's 12 on center. This will be 12, and then same thing on the horizontal, yep. same right? Same thing on the horizontal. 12 on center going up. So in the footings themselves, you know, I talk about phase one, phase two, and how after we get these footings placed, you guys are gonna hit the pause button on placing concrete. We're not gonna go right into walls. What's our next step? So next step would be fill this place up with stone. So we're gonna start inside doing the footings, yeah. inside and outside. So we have interior drainage, exterior drainage. We got to get all that stuff in. And so after that's done, we're gonna do the capillary break, but I need to let the guys, you know, we have a ramp built over on this backside and I gotta be able to drive across that with machines mm. to get all the stone in here, grade everything out. And then once they're done with that, we'll clean the top of the footing, get that all prepped and ready. So uh, they only have um, about a day and a half to get the stone in here. Mm -hmm. Then we have them coming Thursday, spray the top of the footing, the capillary break, Friday, the engineers are back out here printing the corners and we're right back into walls to keep so moving. Next week we go into walls. Yeah, we're heading vertical. So I know the question's gonna come up. You guys left rebar out there. We did. So you can we'll, actually go back, drill we'll, an epoxy. Yep, we'll have to our epoxy verticals. those in. That's, me, we, need, we need an entrance to get a machine in here. If we're gonna do it, like just right. manpower, it'd take forever. Right, and schedule's the name of the game. You know, for us, like we're, you know, while we have a long schedule ahead of us, we yeah. wanna be working efficiently and the best time to make up time is in the beginning here. Yes. Yeah. So as far as the detailing of these footings, you know, there, I feel like every time we do this, there's always a different detail yeah. uh, or some, a different way they're doing it. And oftentimes, you know, you, you're either doing a keyway or rebar and here you're actually doing We're both. Doing so what, like walk me through like what, what the, how that's detailed and what they basically mocked up in this, in, in this certain area here. Yeah, so the way that this is called out is for the rebar to be on the inside face. So that's just beyond halfway through that, that footing. And then the keyway being in there, once we spray that capillary break, it's also giving us somewhere to bed in um, the bed night strip. So Great point, yeah. So we're doing, and it, it gives it a little bit of protection so somebody could step over the footing and not smash in the bed night strip. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're putting in that water stop to help for any of you know, the water that's trying to snake across the top of the footing into our slab area. So, so kind of getting down in, in here, right, Mike? So yeah. we have, this is, our, this is our two by four, which is angled on both sides. This yep. is our keyway. Yep. So this is basically we'll the- Make a depression in the top of the footing. Exactly, the male form to, prevent, to, to create that depression, like you said. And then our rebar is inside of that, meaning it's inside of, this will be 
future basement yep. and not on the exterior. But that bentonite strip, now now you're talking about doing a capillary break. Yep. So to repeat, what that's doing is preventing moisture from wicking up. Correct. And getting through this and then into the wall. So we've prevented moisture from tri coming up. You've talked about you know the fact that we have to get stone and we have redundant drainage systems inside and out. We also yep. have two internal sump pumps. Correct. So we have a lot of protection against water, but then you just mentioned bentonite. And that bentonite is gonna be in here. So if water was to penetrate Number one, it has to penetrate through our, our damp proofing or our yeah, waterproofing. waterproofing on the exterior. And then if it does make its way through that, it's going to hit that and that bentonite's going to swell. swell. Yep. And then prevent moisture from coming in even further than that. Yep. And then even beyond that, if water were to make its way through, we have our... Vapor barrier that will come and be taped up the wall. Taped up the wall and then we tie that into our internal vapor retarder that goes up across our foundation wall, ties into our tie WRB. WRB goes up, ties into our roof, each, up well, and over. Each floor too, we got to do some detailing around that. So yeah. we had a very productive meeting with Sega today. Awesome, so they were on site? They were not on site. We zoomed it for okay. now. We kind of have a lot going on. Well, technology and allows us to it zoom was, down, uh, yeah. It was fairly cold this morning, so we figured we'd, we'd so save let's, Ken. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. What was, what was the reason that we're reaching out to Sega now? And what was that conversation? Yeah, so we just wanted to get ahead of it and think about all the different areas where we have to pay attention to the air sealing on the house. And you know this, we have a couple of corners and we have uh, you know, some curved roofs and some tricky details. So mm -hmm. getting ahead of that and thinking about how we're gonna attack each floor and keeping that continuity as we go up and out and around and our floor systems start tying into the walls and ways that, you know, so it's, we don't hit the end of the project and go, shoot, how do we address this now? Right. If we start thinking about it well before we start framing, as we get to each layer of the pie, we can, you know, whether we're putting little flaps of Sega in there so we can tie the interior out and around our floor system and then back into our, our, um, our uh, outside WRB. air barrier on yep. the inside. Well, it just oh, wraps around, the, then yeah. the WRB will just skim right over that. So then gotcha. you're, you're keeping this continuity through the floors. Sure. And then the same can be applied when we get to roof system, depending on how everything unfolds with framing that and um kind of detailing that stuff out just meeting with sega beforehand and they have a ton of feedback they've seen a lot of crazy designs and so just having a good understanding so when we get to that phase there's not going to be this oh crap we should have right like, try to get ahead of it. i'm sure there's always going to be that and right. that's part of construction it, you can always improve but and, and you know what the one thing with this home it's very traditional a new england tudor style home yeah uh, T Design Group has done a great job designing it and it's really you know up to us now where it's like there's a, a lot of complexity to the way we do have that continuity and yeah. you know it's not a relatively simple form remind me um, how many corners we have 46 40 46 on the main house on the main house there's another which, like 12 on the garage which i've heard is a record uh for uh at least for this guy yeah uh, on a residential project. on a residential home uh, which is great. I mean, it, you know, it's, there's probably areas that like we look at like, oh, this is, this is crazy, but it's really setting us up for a really great product and really thoughtful, but it makes it complex because yeah. it's not just a box and we're not dealing with, you know, straight lines and flat lines. We're dealing with, like you said, a lot, a lot of the roof is curved uh, and we have to deal with that. Yeah. Jumping ahead. So you're, you're, you're going to get in here with stone. We're doing under slab insulation. We have our vapor barrier on top of that, right. and then we'll be prepped for slab, but we still have more foundation to do. Yes, we so do. So where, where is that, and, and when does that come into play? So as our site guy moves back on to the job site starting tomorrow, we just had a meeting with him this morning, and we have this front entryway, and then we're going into this built-in one-bay garage where it's actually over on that far stake over there with a the red ribbon on it. We have to finish excavating for that. And then we also have another garage over on the back corner that we have to excavate for that. So I so think we'll it's, start clearing it's, this out and getting that prepped and ready. You, you got to excavate all that. Yeah. So we're getting, I mean, we're getting close to our tree zone. We're not, we're not going to be in the tree zone. We're not. There's a sign, Doug, make sure you see that. Please keep out. We are not going to be in that tree zone, but you do need to excavate closer to it. Correct. And to get that one car garage in, but you're doing that in a separate phase because of the way the footings and the walls detail out. And because you want the continuous waterproofing on the main, main body house. of the yep. house, because that's where the basement is. So the entire basement foundation will be waterproofed up into a grade. 
and then the found the, the garages those do not have a basement nor living space no. so those walls do not need to be waterproof no. But for reference, you just kind of skimmed over, but this is our center entrance. Yep, so, we're on the back side of it right now. And, and this right here will be a future bluestone patio over, you know, over top a foundation wall, but that will be, it was actually something I think you recommended, is that right? Re uh, removing the, the cold storage below it? Uh, Making that up? <laughs> I don't know. I, Someone it was, we'll say as a collective, collectively, collectively, we brought it up to the team. We kind of went back and forth on best way to address it. We're having, you know, our concern obviously was keeping that dry and how dry, to but also that. the thermal bridging between the, 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 the outside slab, which would be above living space, but yeah. into the main body of the house. Yeah. So there's, there's some complications with that. Cause and, it still uh, needs to be waterproof, but not to the level of, Hey, there's a vault underneath it. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, but I think it's important to note that that is the center of the house, which really starts to give you the scale because right now it feels like we're very close to the end of the home. But the fact is we're actually in the center and you do have that single car garage. There's a beautiful covered entryway on this end and then that yes. goes all the way back to our garage there. Yeah, another two bay back there. Gotcha. We were going to record this a little bit earlier. I got here. He said he was short on blankets. <laughs> I ran out and grabbed blankets. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that because you guys... I feel like it was warmer the last three episodes. It's not that warm today. Uh, it, was, it was pretty chilly this morning. Now it's up around 40 degrees. We're staying just above that freezing. Um, overnight, there is that potential for it to drop down right to freezing. So right to 32 degrees. So, so, so what look like tarps are actually insulated blankets yes. for everyone that lives in a much warmer climate than us. You don't have to worry about that. And you know, all this needs to do is cover the top of concrete because as concrete dries or cures, not yeah. dries, uh, it actually creates a substantial amount of heat. It does. Uh, so they're going to wrap these up and then they'll peel these back tomorrow because like you said, what's tomorrow? Stone. We have snow? Stone. Oh, oh you're saying weather-wise. <laughs> no, no, like, no, no, I, I wasn't like... asking about weather, but <laughs> when you said snow, I was like, I didn't know that. <laughs> stone. Yes, <laughs> stone. No, 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 no. It starts warming up towards the end of the week. The end of the week is going to be like 60 again. It's so going to be amazing. We're riding this like roller coaster in New England. Right. But... So, this this allows us to get these things in. There is no snow coming. No there snow. Is we are good. We're in the clear. Coming. Yeah. Uh, we so actually we had snow yesterday morning. Yeah, and I heard that if it was if it was snowing Friday, it would have been a whole different. I mean, not that they would have given up on it, but it wouldn't have been a great start after 70 degree days last week. Yeah. So we're gonna deal with that roller coaster. But like I said, the the insulated blankets allow us to keep moving. You guys are gonna get some good weather. They'll be in here first thing early tomorrow, stripping this getting this thing prepped for stone. These guys are waiting on one more truck over here. Yep. And then you guys are gonna be wrapped for our footings. Before, I wanted to talk about one more thing. So for us, Mike's actually gonna run up to the truck and grab the batch ticket. Batch ticket from the concrete is basically the exact mix that this concrete is. It's one of those things where it's like, do we really need that? No, but it's information that gives us the information on the concrete that we're placing. Should there ever be an issue in the future, we can always refer back to it. So Mike's gonna go grab that batch ticket from the truck up, up there. Uh, he's gonna grab that and make sure that we have that documented. It will go in our project file uh, in Procore. And we'll have that information for future reference if we ever need it. Appreciate you guys sticking around. Make sure you tune in next week when we got, we'll have walls being formed. Yeah. We'll have our stone in, no snow. No snow. And uh, now that I said that, it's probably going to snow. All right. Well, hopefully I didn't jinx this. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next episode.